Track, Set, Go. Traveling Podcast presents Travel Star Tuesdays. Welcome to another episode of Pack Set Go Travel. It's a traveling podcast, I think it's called. I'm joking. It's called Travel Star Tuesdays. It's a hybrid. It it's a hybrid. It's called Travel Star Tuesdays, where we where we search for people like us, like minded people that love to travel, love to travel, and love to travel. <laughs> so we found a beautiful guest. Her actual Instagram name is uh You've Got Wanderlust, and I'm like, she has to travel. Because Wanderlust is traveling. It's what we do. So we followed her, followed her, followed her. We've been friends on Instagram. Never met her in real life, still to this day. But I just love your pictures. And I want to say thank you for coming on our podcast. Talk about. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you guys for (laughs) having me. Clap, 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 clap. Oh, I have to add a button. I've been saying this every podcast to add the clap button to make make the sound effects. But yeah, but you know who's lazy. You already know them. You already know the person. Listen, I'm keeping it very organic and authentic. We don't need the special sound effects. All we need is the wonderful personalities of our travel. Who's trying to get in here like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need it. And that's why I don't give him any special effects. Oh, that's what yeah. I want to have the button. I need the bird button. <laughs> I need the horn. I need the I need I need the clap. I need the booze. I need everything. So it's all on cue. Wow. Meg, Meg please don't encourage him. Please, seriously. Please. It doesn't take much for him to go over the edge. <laughs> So, Smalls, go ahead, take the lead, because you you're a very good co-captain on this flight, and you you have. Well, you have, well I thank you, you sir. Good, I thank you. Guys, look like that. you're on a flight too with your awesome big headphones. <laughs> I mean, I'm about to hit the recline <laughs> button on my chair and just. You ain't know where I'm at. I'm Cruise back control. in the plane. Sixty three k. He's probably in first class as usual. I love it. He's, he always flies first class. I'm, I'm jealous, plane, but we get there at the same time. Well, listen, I'm jealous of you because I, I see your amazing <laughs> pictures. Now, first off. Once again, could you let the, our community, our family know where they can find you at? Let's say Instagram, for instance, in Absolutely. case they have questions, yes, comments. Yes, check me at You've Got Wanderlust. It's all one. Uh, you, v, you've got Wanderlust. And my name is Meg McGuire. There are a lot of us. That's why I had to make it something unique for my username. Well, yeah, I mean, I love the name. I love the IG handle. It's dope. You've got Wanderlust. I mean, the name speaks for itself, especially for the travel community, as Goon already stated. But now going through your page, I'm not like a stalker per <laughs> se, but I said, wow. You know, because I've tried to surf over the years. You know, I've tried to surf. I've done the boogie boards, you know, yeah. the knee boards and everything. I've, I've washed out and wiped out every time. Granted, I'm a big guy, but I can never get I that I think you're bounce. missing. I think you just need the great ex- instructor. Well, I, I've done it a few places, a few countries. Sounds, they try to teach me. It sounds like, it a, sounds like a challenge. Like, I know it is. I just challenged like you. I think you need to come to yeah, Costa Rica. It. it went yeah. over his head. I, I heard the challenge. I heard it. It was there. I think you need the right okay. instructor. Well, no. Maybe we have to link up I one day in Costa Rica. Think Why it might not? have I mean, to happen. Challenge accepted. If, if that was an acceptance, I'm ready. Okay. Now, now I have to ask, how many years have you okay, been surfing? So that's a really good question. And I've got multiple answers. Um, the first time I ever surfed, this is so pee pee, but I was in Hawaii. My parents took us there as like their anniversary gift to themselves. My sister and I went and I learned, I know, Shaka bro. Um, I learned from, I still remember my instructor's name. That's like how life altering it was. His name was Luis and he was from Argentina and he did a headstand on his surfboard. And I thought he was the coolest person on the entire planet. Uh, that was my first surf lesson ever. I'm the whitest white person ever. So me in the sun is like not necessarily what you would expect, but it is what it is. So I really loved it the first time. And then when I studied architecture in Costa Rica back in 2009, 2009, um, seems like it was yesterday, but it was so long ago, <laughs> I ended up taking lessons again and I really loved it. And Fast forward, now I own a vacation and surf trip company in Costa Rica with someone who is local, who is a professional surfer. Okay. And now what part of Costa Rica, San Jose, where are you located? Good question. So we operate all over the country, but we are based in Playa Samara. It's actually, in my biased opinion, it is the best place in the entire country to learn how to surf because it's a protected bay. It really is though. I've been all over the country with our surf trips and just vacations um, for ourselves and for our clients. And to be completely honest with you, it's a 
so one, it's a sand beach. So there are different types of breaks when it comes to surfing. You've got point breaks, um, you've got beach breaks, which is sand bottom. You've got reef breaks, which break on an actual reef. So when you fall there, watch out. <laughs> yeah. That's your ass. Yeah. That's, that, I'll leave that for the professionals. See, yes, it's, it's yes. different levels. That's for the experienced exactly. surfers. So we have a beach break. Um, there are very few critters, which is great for a lot of kids who would otherwise be scared or adults that would otherwise be scared. My mom, we took her, we took her out one day and before she got in the water, she said, are there things out there? And I was like, what do you mean? Are there things out there? And she's like, you know, like creatures. And I was like, it is the ocean. It's not like a fish pool. Like, <laughs> yes, yes, they're out there, but hopefully they won't attack you and you know, it'll, it's their world too. So in our bay, there's a reef that goes most of the way around. There's an island, there's a little break where the boats can come in and out, and then it's a reef the rest of the way across. So we don't have these dangerous rip currents. We don't get huge waves. We get waves that kind of get knocked down a little bit by the reef. So it's really good for right. like beginner intermediate surfers. And then either direction, north or south from us, we've got waves for every level from beginner to professional. We've got some overhead okay. waves that I, that terrify me personally. I like- How, how many um, feet, how many feet? It can go 15 to 20. Like I'm talking Hawaiian style, big waves. Yeah, for sure. Really? Like I have not gone out in them. I will be completely honest with you. It scares the crap out of me. I have like a, I feel like I have a safe fear, respect for, for the ocean. So I know what my level is and I stick to waves of my size. <laughs> That's good. Well, no, yeah. no, that's dope. That's dope. I mean, I, I'm I'm really inspired by Thank the story, you. to be honest with you, because I, I noticed when I've been in Costa Rica, I meet a lot of, I mean, a lot of Americans who actually make that trek over and say, hey, I started a business in Costa Rica. I yeah. moved to Costa Rica. I met, a, I met a lady and her son. She said, we came on vacation one year. And six months later, I moved from Florida. Took all my stuff Amazing. and been here ever it's, since. I am surprised. There are a lot of expats in Costa Rica. It's actually a conversation I have a lot because it's one of the things that I am constantly trying to balance. And I actually think when I, I reached out to you when you guys were, um, were you in Indo? I don't remember where you were, but it's pretty much true for all of your travels that I really love that you guys interact with the local people. And I don't, I don't get the feeling that you're doing things that are like really commercialized. And it really does feel like when you guys are traveling that you're, you know, participating in the local culture. And that is so important to me um, because I'm not Costa Rican. And so I feel like it's really important to me that, that the local people not only are respected, but also are upheld and that their small businesses can flourish or that they can even start their own small businesses as opposed to people just kind of coming in and taking advantage of how amazing Costa Rica is. So for me, I'm kind of like on this delicate balance, right? Because I'm this, you know, American from New York. And it's like, well, what do you have to do with surfing? One, there's good surfing in New York, just in case you weren't sure, because you guys are from New York or you guys are not from New York. Yeah. No, there is surfing. There's there some surfing great waves. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. But I'm not even from New York City. I'm actually from Rochester, Buffalo area, and there's even surfing on the Great Lakes. So you can surf in a lot of different places where people don't even expect. But, you know, owning a surf company in Costa Rica, it's interesting because I consider my, myself an expert in it because I've been doing it and like really involved, but I can only give like have any sort of credit um, because of local people who have taught me things that I know and that I'm trying to, I try to be really conscious about not sharing too many of their secrets because they're theirs to have. So I can't take credit for all of that. I can only take credit for what I do, which is, you know, logistics and planning and kind of learning those things, but all of those things and about the places and, and the people that we travel with and that we send our clients with are local people in as many capacities as we can do, because that's, I'm all about that, like making sure that Costa Ricans really take the lead and are able to better their own lives because there is a great disparity. So I see that a lot. And it's one of those things that I'm always like, oh, is my face 
on my website, you know, a detriment to my company because I really want it to be about Costa Rica and about Costa Ricans. And you, I mean, you guys have been there. So like, you know, the, yeah. the, coast, the Costa Rican community is incredible. And I think that's what makes it such a draw for people that are coming from other countries. You know, you, you feel welcome from the moment you step off the plane. And I, yes. I, I come back to the sure. States and I'm like, God, we're awful. <laughs> like, yeah. I just feel there's unwelcome no in my own welcome, country. Lifestyle brothers. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's nothing. No. Every time I come back to America, I'm like, oh, do I have to go I home? know. Like, it's, 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 it's like a mental, mental drag when the plane lands at <clears throat> JFK and look out the window and I see buildings. I don't see no welcome signs. I don't, I see gloom. I see clouds. I it could be a sunny day and it's still and cloudy. It's, you know what? It's Boom. so funny that you say that about the buildings because I remember... So my, my family, like historically is from, you know, Ireland, Scotland, but they migrated to Canada. So other than Canada, though, I hadn't really traveled. I hadn't traveled internationally until I was in college when I went to study abroad. And I remember I was in Spain. I stayed in Spain. You know, we traveled a little bit. Um, when I came back, I remember being on the plane and like flying over the States and like seeing just like the cookie cutter communities from above. And I just started crying and I had no, like, I, it sounds so ridiculous now, but like I got off the plane, my dad and my sister were so excited to see me because they hadn't seen me in months. And I was so distraught to see them. And it wasn't because I don't love them and care about them, but it was just like this cult, like reverse culture shock where like I had gone away and like seen so many things and changed myself. Mm -hmm. And then I came back and saw the states and like it's amazing because it it shows you so many things and it doesn't it doesn't mean that you don't love where you're from like and i think that's people have a hard time understanding that when i when i do criticize the united states sometimes it's like it's not that i don't love it here it's that there is so much more and it makes me so sad when i come back and i feel like people don't understand that there's a no. thing it's actually a thing it's called the happiness index you can look it up online and costa rica has actually been in the top five for the happiness index for happiest countries on the planet and it's based on wow. it's not based on their income like that's what's the most fascinating thing about it is like it's just based on they think a lot of it has to do with you know their diet um how much time they spend outside you know how how connected they are within the different age groups that's something i noticed is really interesting there is it's not just a reverence for your elders but it's actually interacting with people of all different ages all the time not just like i'm gonna go visit my grandmother in the nursing home it's like my grandmother is you know gonna make a rape us with us this weekend you know what i mean like it's just it's a constant interaction i have friends who are 20 years younger than me and i have friends who are 40 years older than me and we hang out together it's so interesting how how fluid it is and like age it like it's like age doesn't matter and at the same time it does because it influences so much people's experiences and what they can teach you and i think that's what's so interesting is about it it's like you're constantly learning from people of all different ages and that makes it so dynamic it's so cool everyone yeah. does seem happy and it's very organic which i really love especially when you travel to those remote mm -hmm. regions of the world, not, yep. not the commercial district where, you know, everybody's mm -hmm. putting on a farce just to say, hey, bye, bye, bye. You're in a remote region <laughs> where there's a cow, there's a, there's a cow, there's a tree, there's a monkey over here on the side of the road, yeah. and everybody's happy to see you organically, yeah. which it, I love. It really is. And I feel like there's just, there's a natural tendency there. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I've, um, one of my friends, Vanessa, actually, she's from Brooklyn and I met her in Costa Rica, but we lived only... 10 miles apart from each other um, when I was in New York and she is a photographer. She does portrait photography and she ended up doing um, a special about this town, Playa Samara, where we live. And she called it the black hole of happiness. And her question was basically, you know, I, she read somewhere in TripAdvisor or something um, from her, you know, one of those travel things that people read. Uh, that Samara is known as the black hole of happiness. And she was like, what does that mean to you? And it was so interesting, you know, that somebody would do a study on that. Like, is happiness disappearing? Is you, you find all of your happiness here? Like, what does it mean? And it's so, so, so super interesting, especially in that town in particular. I saw a lot of other people's um, responses to it. I, I participated in it for her. But it was so interesting to see the different concepts of it. And it had to do with energy and like, 
you know, this strange energy that you can't explain, but you can feel. And so it's so, it's one of those, you really have to be there type of thing. And I think that's so true with travel. I, I was thinking about this the other day, like you see pictures of Machu Picchu and you're like, wow, it's yeah. beautiful. But when you go there, it's so much it's bigger. <laughs> even even the journey yes, just to get exactly. there exactly is, is, is people don't understand how no. to even get there they think oh i take a plane there and i just take a car and i get no, there. no it's like no, an expedition no. of extreme no. proportion expedition. you have the quick way which is which is three yeah. hours or you have the long way which is yep. three days it's still a long way to get there and when you get there you're like more yeah steps. yeah more, like, and it like, keeps going up yeah, it's, it's physically challenging yeah. yeah it's physically challenging i'll tell people it's not like the picture where it's just I'm here at the ruins. Right. No, you got to get to and the ruins. Here's the secret part about it. When you get to Ma uh, Machu Picchu, you're not even really there because the top of the mountain is a whole yep. other hour to get to the top, which you never no. see in pictures. You never no see No one that even in tells pictures. you about you know it. Why? Honestly, people, I got to go back yeah. because I didn't know about it until it was standing there. You didn't know about the top top? Go no. And then I couldn't get there because they didn't have, like, they were limiting the number of people that could go up. So yes. I was there and we were only there for like two days, which was a big mistake. <laughs> But yeah. I, I couldn't even get there. And I was like, I'm here. I could climb up this mountain, but it closes at yeah. four because you had to get down before sunset. Yeah, yeah. I could go up that one, before but I need sunset, tickets yeah. and I can't get there. I was like, ah! So I just sat there oh, and like took it it's in. Amazing. Well, yeah. well, Meg, Meg, I'm going to give you a Snapple <laughs> fact. All right. We had the opportunity to go, but my, a certain person was like, hell no. How, how much long? How much long we got to walk up to the top? It was a two hour climb from the three hour trek to get oh to the top God. of the mountain. Which which is just a myth. I'm not I'm not gonna say yeah. any names. It was me. It was me. <laughs> but, it was me. I oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't. The guy says this is not the top of the mountain. The mountain is up there. And then if you see, if you look closely, you can see people walking. And I look. You're and like, like what? I see one person just. And he, he says, said, "Listen, guys, I can get you right now. If you want to go, we can go gosh. right now. I can get you in." Yeah, but it was it was, two, it was twenty steps to go up. It's it like an hour and a half to go up, and then an hour and a half, obviously, to come back down, but not down to the street. Yeah, level, down to the. Are. Down to Main where Machu Picchu. The picture, the picture, yeah, the Machu Picchu is, you know, I'm like, eh. oh my gosh, I would have traded one, places. If you, with if you, you. see one mountain, you see oh, them all. Yeah. I was like, I'm sorry, my legs were like jello. See, I would have traded you, man. I'd have traded Goon for you, man. We made small, it to the we top. We would have yeah. done that. Goon! You could have just took some this videos. This guy said, nah, and I said, all right, never mind. I said, he don't want to do it. I'm good. He's not going to go. He didn't want to do it either. I was going to do it. No, no, remember, because we had, it's funny enough, we made a friend and he's from South Korea. So we met him randomly. He was a solo traveler. So he was like, hey, he hung out with us the entire day. And he was like, whatever you want to do, I'm, I'm going to go. You want to go, I'll go too. But I'm like, if the whole team doesn't move as a unit, I know, we're not going to go. He was a solo traveler and he, um, he had a passport and we had passport stamp wars. Like, That's the guy. That was a gentleman that you saw. Him I love battling him. That was yes. so funny. I was, I was trying to tie it together because yeah. that was a gentleman they were battling stamps because he was a solo traveler and he's naming the country. We're naming the country. He's naming a country. We're naming country, a country. Yeah. He's naming a country. We're like, wait a uh -oh. minute. He didn't go there yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, I said, go, on, go, on, pull out the passport. Hit him with something. Yeah, we, we, we had stamps. Oh, yeah. I love collecting. that. He's, he's been to like a, he's been to a lot of countries, and he's from um South That's Korea. That's awesome. I, I gotta do, I gotta do a call for the podcast. He'd be a good. He would candidate. be a good one. So. Yeah. yeah, he would be amazing. Yeah, I have to, yeah. yeah. he's he had me beat. I'm like, he went to a place. Um, we went to, he went to um, where did he go? It was like the kingdom. Um. Something kingdom. And I was like, where is that? Random yeah. place, random country like the, where you look at it on the, national geographic. He's like the kingdom. I was like, you're like the country? Kingdom. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, he, I was like, oh man, you got me beat. But then he didn't do no countries. Like he didn't do none of the the, the, the Caribbean islands. He didn't do like um, Central America. I hadn't all right, America. all right. We did. Well, you got to, oh, yeah. but geographically it's closer speaking, to you it makes and sense he's because closer he's, to the other one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, of course. So, for us New Yorkers, yeah, the Caribbean yeah, is nothing. I love the Caribbean. Not, yeah. not downgrading the Caribbean, it's but for us, it's a hop, skip, and a jump. And even even for my Floridians now, for the Florida residents, that's like for them going to the South like Beach. Nothing. Like, okay, I'm going to go to exactly. Jamaica for the day. Yeah. It's nothing. It's nothing. But now, Meg, now I notice your name says yeah. Wonderlust, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm not going to explain to our family what it is because they already know, but your love for travel now. So, What's your favorite country oh that you've gone goodness. to? goodness. Well, I have to say Costa Rica because I love it so much that I started a company there. <laughs> um, I literally, okay, so the day that I got to Costa Rica, I was there to study for, you know, two months architecture. 
up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And I got there, we got to San Jose. San Jose is not known for tourism. You know, there are touristy things to do in San Jose, which I know now, which I didn't know then. But I literally like got picked up, got to the hotel. I was in the hotel of all places. Like who gets inspired by a hotel? This girl. Yeah, right? I did, I did, I did. We stay we Thank stayed you. in San Jose. Most people yeah. don't realize it's a city. It's a city. It's a city. It's like, okay, no. beach, what beach? Five hour drive Bingo. this way for the beach. And I was in the hotel and I was like, I could live here. Not at the hotel, obviously. Just like <laughs> I had this vibe. Like I just felt it. And there were plants and there was like and it was a small hotel. It wasn't like some big chain. Like it was just I don't know. There was something about it. And that was like day one, right? At the hotel. So the next day we go up to Monteverde and we stayed in these little cabins that were completely out of wood and stone, which were locally sourced, um, basic beds, nothing fancy. We had a, like a sliding door to go out onto this front like area, which was grass. It wasn't, there's no patio. It was nothing fancy at all. And I watched a lightning, a, an electric lightning storm during the sunset with a rainbow and i was like i'm moving here <laughs> like that's <Yeah>. it <laughs> Who, what like to this day All i remember three. that that's still the deal I, for you you where 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 is that possible i was standing like 30 me meters yards whatever whichever yeah. concept yeah, no, um, no, don't worry. from like the natural rainforest cloud forest of Monteverde. I'm looking out over the expanse of the universe. It feels like watching lightning and sunset and rainbows. And I'm just like, what is this life? Like, where am I? Like, did I get transferred to a different universe? Like, how is this possible? And that for me was just like the beginning of the beginning of the end, if you will. Yeah. I, I, there is, yeah so much diversity in Costa Rica that it's, I mean, and this is true in the United States too, which I think we forget sometimes because we travel so much outwardly because we're looking for that change, that change of culture. But when it comes to like the physical landscape, the United States is super varied as well. Like incredibly, if, if, you, if travel, you travel, yes, if, if you stay you in the travel. same place, it's going to be the same all the time. But there is so much diversity in the United States and in Costa Rica, it's got it's only like 1% of the planet or something, but it's got this huge amount of biodiversity compared to the rest of the world, which is incredible. And it's kind of like the little connection point between South America and North America being in that Central America zone, you know, it's an earthquake zone. So I just feel like it's just this little hot spot of life. And it's amazing. I, I'm constantly in awe of it. I haven't even gotten to see all of it. And it's tiny. You know, you can drive, you can drive from it's one tiny. side to the other in a day. Like people there, I remember, you know, they call me and they'd be like, are you okay? I was like, what do you mean? Am I okay? And they're like, you're in the United States, right? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, I saw the tornadoes. And I was like, tornadoes and i'm like looking out the window like where, like what's what's the, where are the tornadoes like i haven't heard anything where's my phone like check the message i'm in new york the tornadoes are like out in yeah I'm like Kansas or that is like so far away from me i didn't even know about it but they knew about it because if there was a tornado happening in costa rica you better like batten down the hatches because it's close enough to you yeah a lot a lot of my international friends do the same thing they'll hit me on whatsapp hey i heard this is a storm exactly. and i'm like a storm i'm like oh yeah that's in new that's in louisiana yep. the flood isn't there yeah, i'm in new york it's yeah. right nearby and it's like you feel it and you kind of know about it sometimes but like sometimes people will hit me with things and i'm like i didn't even know it was happening because it's just not in my periphery you know it's not right here so 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 interesting but of all the places for sure, Costa Rica. Um, I, the smallest place I've ever been, like land wise, was Andorra. You guys know Andorra? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Check it. Hold <laughs> Write on. it down. Andorra. Andorra? Uh -huh. A N D O R R A. A N D O R R A. R -R -A. It's a tiny little country between Spain and France. It's like a little circle. And the only reason I knew okay. about it. How far, how far is that for Spain and, okay, Spain and mm -hmm. France. Okay, cool. I'm trying to think of my, my brain ge geographically. 
of yeah. France. And it's not because like across the whole border. It's like a little piece a little in between the two. How far is that from like Monaco? Because Monaco is like in between, uh, that's between um, France and Italy. So it'll be- I don't bit, know how I'll, far it is. I don't know the answer to that. I'll find it, don't worry. You find it. Small, it, it I'll find it. It was accessible I took a work. bus to get there from okay. Barcelona. Now, did you, did you show your passport to I don't enter? believe that I did. It was a while ago though, but there was, but that's, okay. I got there by bus. And we went because they were known for snowboarding, like snowboarding, skiing, winter sports, mountainous mm -hmm. area. So that's why I was there. And then it was, it was cool. I mean, it was the smallest, I think that was the smallest place I've I been, never, like country. I never heard mm -hmm. of this place. This is yes, I win the passport okay. game. You, you, you stumped us, yeah. Yes, you Pound are, it. yes, Pound you it. are. Pound it. Bring it in. <laughs> Boom. Wow. Okay, well, let me ask you this now, Meg. Now, okay. So if somebody said right now, Meg, listen, grab your suitcase, pack a bag. We, we, we'll send you right now to a dream trip. You got one hour. Anywhere in the world that you want to go. Pack your bag, one hour. It's on us. Where would um, it be? i probably say Bali, Indonesia, because I've been wanting to go there for so long. But... I also am like obsessed with the idea of going to Egypt because I'm like fascinated with the architecture and the history. And so that like everything Egypt like fascinates me. I used to watch like nonstop, you know, the tomb stories and like all of that. Like, I just think that's fascinating. But I think for the beauty and nature and getting outside, like I think that Bali is like. Those are two dope, wonderful destinations that you pick. Both are different. By contrast, but both amazing destinations. We were fortunate to be able to visit both, and you honestly would love both. And if you do go, we have drivers yes. for you in both countries. Yes. I love it. Tour guides. Where where would Safe you guys secure. suggest? Like of all the places you guys have been so far, what what stands out to you as like a place that one that people should go? Um, I guess you should probably you probably have to split that because there's probably like experienced travelers should go to some places and like first time travelers like where they should go there's yeah, different levels there's sure. different levels there's different levels well for the seasoned travelers or the soon to become seasoned travelers i recommend they come see <laughs> <Nate> mcguire <Yes. laughs> surf pool costa rica yeah, that's absolutely. number one on my list because costa rica itself is a beautiful yeah. country and you have two sides if you eat the you have a couple of sides you know, San Jose, like I tell a lot of people, if you don't know, it's the city. So if you're looking at a National Geographic picture and you're looking at the rainforest, you're looking at zip line yeah. and whitewater rafting, surfing, okay. it's not going to nope. be in San Jose. I can help with that. So be prepared <laughs> to get a... Yes, she can help you guys. You know how to find her on Instagram. But like I said, if you do do that in San Jose, be prepared to wake up at 5 a.m. every day. <laughs> I'm lying. 4.30 a.m. 4.30 a.m. day every day, 4.30 in the morning to start your journey to get to the destination of what you saw in the National Geographic brochure. But Miss McGuire, we want to thank you first and foremost. Before, I mean, wait, wait, wait. this- I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. That was the place go that ahead. you should go, go if you're seasoned, yeah. right? I'm yes. Sure you could go- No, 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 no. But, but, but she you, said- I said, I said if you're soon to become okay, seasoned cool. as well. Then she asks us a place where to go if you're yeah. not seasoned that you missed, went over your head again. So, so I, 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 I have that place. That's why there are two of you. I wrote it. I wrote it down. <laughs> he ready? wrote it down. Okay. Wait. I want to hear. I want to hear this one. I want to hear this one. <clears throat> I'm going to critique if it if as you're, well. If you're um, an explorer and you like adventurous stuff, I recommend Andorra. <laughs> A N D O R R A. It's between Spain and France, and you need a bus to get there. If you love snowboarding, <laughs> skiing. Ding, falling down the mountain. <laughs> or <laughs> I apologize, mate. I, no, I apologize. Is, I, I just googled it. What you mean? This is where you should go. I don't know by I don't know if I have to bend it before except you. I'm going there tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I wish. I wish I go tomorrow. Oh my goodness. You yo, for stumping us, I mean, we hardly ever get stumped. I'm like, right now I'm like I'm blushing. Like you got like you stumped I'm us. You surprised. Found a place that we I been really to and never thought heard. for sure you guys would be like, oh yeah, of course, Andor. That was like the first place we went. <laughs> no, I have to give you what a, uh -oh. a gift for uh -oh. doing this. This is like usually we don't give gifts out that much, but I'm gonna give you a gift. This is the um 
travel star, superstar, you get a star yes. of the day. I'm gonna give you this star. See the star here? This is a star that we created. Oh it's yeah. Going to Smalls. And you put this anywhere you want in your country. Yes. Put this at your surf yeah. shop, at the airport, on your bag, and you scan this. And then when we go to Andorra, you get to see where we've gone. I love it. Or you do, or you do scan the barcode. That's a brilliant idea. See how, see how cool so that cool. is. So when we get to Andorra, we're gonna put this actually at the um, at the. I think that's mountain. a good idea. Make sure it doesn't yeah. get covered I'll put, in snow. I'll put it two places. I'll put this Holland Mountain in uh, Machu Picchu, the top top, and the top of Andorra. I love I it. Go. I can't believe we haven't been there yet. And we'll have one at the surf school. Absolutely, the absolutely. We're gonna mail this to you now. We're gonna get your information offline and mail this out to you. Perfect. ASAP. Next day delivery. I feel honored. And actually, that's only the second time Woo! we've given us work. Yeah, so yeah, we have like, we have like maybe I don't know. But you Two? guys, that means <laughs> no, 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 that means you have to actually yeah, come and surf at the surf school. So Smalls, get ready. Start practicing your pop ups. That's the problem. I gotta get back <laughs> and shake my pop up. I'm more like flop ups. I'm not gonna lie. My 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 core my core is not what it used to be because people don't understand surfing is an actual is an activity. activity. You have to be in shape. You have to have your core tight. Your you core got has this to be balance. Strong. People Work don't they the don't balance realize that too. Slowly start like. Do like the T shape so you're like laying flat, hands next to your chest. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna pretend the paddle, push up, and then just do it slow. Mm -hmm. Like you can do it. Just practice it, it's, it. It starts out good, but it never it never ends well. When I was in Barbados, shout out to <laughs> Zed's uh, Zed's uh, surf school in Barbados. So Zed and his school was trying to teach me. I learned a little bit, but it never ends well. To to it starts out nice. Yeah, go, yeah, you gotta go to gotta the best. come to the best. And you that's comment. what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold you to it. I'm going to hold you to that, Smalls. I'm going to hold you to that. You'll be there taking the pictures. Oh, I'm going to be video. <laughs> be BTS behind the scenes. Look at Smalls. Go, go, go. Oh, hey, white Hey, he's not going to be go, wiping go, out go, with go, me. Go. Let's get this together. No, no, not with you. Not with you. Not with you. Maybe <laughs> You're going to be, be like, oh, hand. my gosh. I'm look at him. He's finally surfing. Check it. He's like this. No, no point no. breaks for me though. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna, I want to stay in a nice Bay Area, a nice you. reef. We got you. Safe. Good. Point, point break is for a level ten. <laughs> I'll be at level. We're not trying to be robbers of oh. hearts or or lives. We're just trying to surf. <laughs> wow, what an amazing, correct the Mundo. What an amazing interview. This, this was an amazing interview. Yes. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, By far, it, it was a lot oh, more than I anticipated. You. You are you are a walking <laughs> book of knowledge, which I always love. And like I tell everybody, our our special guests are our family, our travel family, just as it is with our listeners who tune in. So everybody give a big a big round of applause for the mic. Oh, oh, oh. Please. <laughs> I had to, I had to. Let the birds fly one time. Meg, please <laughs> not encourage them. Oh my no, no. What was no. happening, Meg? Oh, <laughs> I've been trying for weeks to bring them back to a normal uh, level. Listen, now uh, I got to start back from I scratch. I get the right. feeling Tell that Goon has this. a Tell normal the... level. I feel like it's just all this out all the time. He, 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 he doesn't. He doesn't. All right. If you want to hear the bird call live, <laughs> follow us on IG, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. It's the same handle, the Lifestyle Brothers. And of course, our prized possession that we love the most is www.thelifestylebrothers.com. Where you can hear me in high definition. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to videotape Smalls surfing with you. I can't wait to get that on um on my new GoPro. Oh, new GoPro. my GoPro Hero Nine. <laughs> I want to get Smalls in HD surfing. Get ready, Smalls. That that that'll be great footage. But yes, people, we appreciate you. We love you. Make sure you buckle up, prepare for landing, but most importantly, continue to fly, 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 fly. <laughs>